Welcome back to another episode of Smooth Brain EDH, where we make the smoothest plays with the biggest brains. This week, we're joined by one of our patrons, Ivern. We have a high-powered game with some new commanders never seen on the channel, so let's see what everyone brewed today. Up first is Jason, who is on Nihilor. Jason's built this deck to be able to steal his opponent's creatures and then sacrifice them for big value or just turn them sideways. Up next is me, Cameron, on Grinzo, Dungeon Warden. I'm playing Goblin Typel, wanting to use Goblin's energies to make a bunch of goblins and pump them up, and hopefully get lucky with Grinzo's activated ability along the way. Our third player today is Ivern, playing a partner pairing of Elmar, Olvenwald Informant, and Wernog, Rider's Champion. Ivern's built this deck as an enraged deck, looking to deal damage to his own creatures to outvalue his opponents. Last up is Alex, who built Ave, Progenitor Ooze. This deck is a mono green storm deck, looking to make infinite mana with a food chain and go off from there. We're about to get to the game, but before that, go ahead and like and let us know down in the comments which deck you're rooting for. Our channel is partnered with Dragon Shield, so if you're looking to pick up any new sleeves or magic related product, check out our affiliate link down in the description. Thanks to Dragon Shield for giving us the code SMOOTH5, use that for 5% off your entire order at checkout. We're also partnered with Inked Gaming, so check out the affiliate link down below if you want to pick up any custom playmats. Now, on to the gameplay. It looks like Alex wins the die roll, and we'll start off for the forest and pass to Jason. Jason starts off with Undercity Sewers, and he'll surveil Mole Drifter to the graveyard. The turn is then passed to Cameron, and we'll see Command Tower into the coveted Turn 1 Soul Ring. The turn is then passed to Ivern, who plays in Dotha Trium, and passes to Alex. But on instep, Alex will Worldly Tutor, and it finds Teemer Sabretooth to the top of his library. Then we'll move to his turn, where he plays another forest, and passes. Now on Jason's turn, he'll shock in Hollowed Fountain, and then cast Regal Bunnycorn. The turn is then passed to Cameron, and he'll start off with a mountain, then cast Mana Echoes, and pass. Now on Ivern's turn, he'll shock in a Temple Garden, and then tap for two, and cast Nature's Lore. He'll pass while searching, but since I have the magic of editing, I know he goes and finds a Jetmere's Garden. The turn is then passed to Alex, and he'll just play another forest, cast Food Chain, and pass the turn. Jason will start off with a basic Swamp, and then cast Ristic Study, move to combat, and hit Alex for two, and then he'll pass the turn to Cameron. And Cameron starts off with Quest for the Goblin Lord and he does not pay the one. Then he'll cast Sardian Avenger and will pay the one, and his quest for the Goblin Lord gets a counter. He does get a mana, but he'll just pass the turn. Now on Ivern's turn, he'll start off with Forest, then he'll tap for two and cast Sack Daddy and not pay the one. Then the turn is passed to Alex, and he'll start off with Eternal Witness. Since he can't pay for Ristic Study, Ivern decides to respond to the Ristic Study trigger by flashing in Bowman, and Ristic Study is once again not paid for. ETB trigger will kill Cameron's goblin, and then the second trigger from Jason drawing will go at Jason's face, and he'll get a 2-2 orc army. The Eternal Witness then gets back Worldly Tutor, and then Alex will exile to Food Chain for 4 mana. Then with that 4 mana, he'll cast Karametra's Acolyte and not pay the 1, and then there's another Bowman trigger, and Jason is shot in the face again. Then the turn is passed to Jason, and he'll start off with a Shattered Sanctum as land for turn. And you better believe he's about to follow up Ristic Study with Smothering Tithe. Then he'll move to combat and hit Cameron for three, and then pass the turn. And on cleanup, he discards two lands. You know, there's too many taxes going on right now, and I'm pretty sure no one cares enough to pay any of them. You know what that means. I'm only going to be announcing when they are paid for from now on. Anyways, continuing on, Cameron will cast Pashalik Mons, and he does pay the one. And this will also trigger his quest. The turn is then passed to Ivern, who on instep will sack his sack daddy for a mountain. Then on his turn, he'll shock in a sacred foundry. Then he'll tap for two and cast Expedited Inheritance. When Jason draws off Ristic Study, Orcish Bowmasters will trigger and it pings Jason for another one. He'll then cast Taminoa. And Bowmasters pings the Orc army, which will exile a Farseek. And then the turn is passed to Alex. He'll tap his Karamech's Acolyte for two and cast Worldly Tutor. Jason will respond to it in his own study trigger with a Swan Song. The tutor is countered. Jason draws a card because Alex won't pay and then Orcish Bowmaster deals a damage to his own army, and Inheritance exiles Unbreakable Formation. After this, Alex will cast Kainrath's Transformation, targeting Orcish Bowmasters. Of course, the one isn't paid. Jason will draw a card, and then Ivern will ping his own Bowmaster to deny Alex a card draw, and a forest will be exiled. And with nothing left to do, Alex will just pass the turn to Jason. And Jason starts off by casting Elder Arthur Maxon. Then he'll move to combat and swing his 6-6 Bunnycorn at Alex, who can't block, so he'll just take it. Post combat, Jason will play Shadowy Backstreet and surveil Virtue of Knowledge into the graveyard. Then he'll tap for one and Path to Exile Karametra's Acolyte, and Alex will go tutor a basic force to the battlefield tapped. Jason then passes the turn and discards a land on cleanup, and now we move to Cameron's turn. He'll start off by casting Metallic Mimic. As it enters, he obviously names Goblin. Also, his quest gets a counter, and he'll get a Mana Echoes mana. He'll then tap for two and cast Munitions Expert, and he does pay the one. When he ETBs, he kills Arthur Maxim. 
This will trigger Expedited Inheritance, which exiles two lands and a Yawgmoth. Quest and Mana Echoes also trigger. Then Cameron will move to combat and hit Jason for two. Then he'll pass the turn, and Ivern starts off with a basic forest from exile. Then he'll cast Plague Spitter. And then Farseek from exile, and he does pay for Ristic City for both of these. Ivern will then move to combat and punch Jason for seven, who can't block it. Oh yeah, and the land he tutors for is Zeator's Proving Ground. He'll then pass the turn to Alex, where he'll just tap for four and cast Frontier Siege. And he chooses cons, he wants that mana. The turn is then passed to He Who Has Mana. He'll start off with Sea of Clouds from Exile. Then he'll cast everyone's favorite Thran Physician, Yogmoth. And then he'll cast his commander, Nihilor. Upon ETB, he'll tap Yogmoth to gain control of Cameron's patch like Mons, and then his Bunny Corn to steal the Orc army. Playing a steely deck over webcam, gotta get those infinite tokens. But the Pashlik Mons one won't stay around for long. It's sacrificed to Yogmoth to put a minus one minus one counter on Munitions Expert, and then the Mons trigger will kill the Expert, which triggers Inheritance and Cameron will exile a land. Then the turn is passed to Cameron, and he'll start off with Goblin Ringleader. It enters with a 1-1 counter, gets his quest for the Goblin Lord a counter, and gets him a colorless mana. And the Ringleader ETB is practically a draw three. Muxes, Frog Toss Banneret. Murderous Red Cap. Not bad. Cameron will then play Castle Imbrith as land for turn from exile, then he'll move to combat and swing for five at Jason. Jason, not wanting to lose his wonderful commander, will just take the five. Then the turn is passed to Ivern, and on upkeep, all creatures and players take one damage. And for each creature dealt damage this way, its controller exiles the top card of their library. So I'm gonna exile a Beast Within, and the Temple is under attack. Yeah, I have Living Death attack. and Arcane Signet. And Jason will actually decline the triggers. Didn't know you could do that. And unfortunately, Cameron's Mimic dies. Moving to main phase now, Ivern will cast Wernog, and Ristic Study is paid for. And then upon ETB, all of Ivern's opponents will investigate, so Ivern investigates four times. Then after this, he'll cast Beast Within from Exile, targeting Smothering Tithe. It resolves, so the Tithe is blown up, and Jason gets a 3-3. The turn is then passed to Alex, and on pre-combat main phase, he floats two green mana. And then he'll tap for four and cast Beast Whisperer. He'll then enchant it with Mark of Sakiko. Then, he exiles the Beast Whisperer, and gets 5 green mana. He'll then use that 5 mana to cast his commander, Ave Progenitor Ooze. And Storm counts 2, so he'll get a total of 3 of them. He then exiles them all to Food Chain to make 18 green mana, and then he'll cast his commander again, Storm count 3 this time, so he gets 4. He exiles them all to Food Chain again, getting him up to 35 green mana that can be only used on creatures. He'll then cast his commander again, Storm count 4, and the table now realize, oh, this is infinite. And since all this mana can't be used to pay for Ristic Study, Jason has been drawing cards. So he'll respond by casting Anguished Unmaking on Food Chain. And it resolves, so Jason will lose 3 life and Food Chain is exiled. Now Alex still has 5 oozes, and should have, if my math is correct, 26 green mana still floating, but through some mental gymnastics, the table says he only has 9 green mana floating. Ah, and I just figured out what happened. When recollecting what happened during Alex's turn, they completely forgot the second casting and exiling and floating of 24 more mana. They also forget that all these oozes should be coming in with extra 1-1 counters. Anyways, after this, Alex will cast Teemer Sabretooth. Then he'll pass through to his second main phase, float two green mana off of his siege, and then crack his clue token to draw a card. Oh, and thank god, he does remember his counters. Unfortunately, Alex was shorted a decent amount of mana, but I don't think there was anything he could have done with it. So anyways, the turn is passed to Jason. And he'll start off with a Ledger Shredder. Then he'll cast a Dark Ritual, and his Ledger Shredder will connive. So he'll draw a card and discard OG Elish Norn. Then with two of the three floating black mana, he'll cast Animate Dead to get her back to the battlefield. This'll kill a few creatures, and then when Plague Spitter dies, it'll deal one to everything. Wernog also dies, and everyone but Alex will investigate. The Plague Spitter will also trigger the Inheritance a few times. Teliod, Suncrown under it. Yeah, I'm gonna choose to do like one or two of these, let me see. Uh, Skyclave, Lightning Greaves, I'll stop there. A forest, a forest, a hurricane, Radagast, and a forest. And Cameron says his exile very quietly, it's Siege Gang Lieutenant. Continuing on, Jason will cast Carrion Feeder, and the president of the Bartow Club. Then Jason will move to combat, and he will swing a 14 power bunny corn at Cameron, then a 4 power Yogmoth at Ivern, and everything else at Alex for 19. There's one Nihilor trigger, and Ivern will lose 2, and Jason will gain 2. Cameron can't block, so he'll take his 14. Temanoa will block Yogmoth, and Alex's smallest ooze will chump the 9 9. Then Grand Crescendo, a swamp, Phyrexian Vindicator, and Boros Reckoner are all exiled from the Inheritance. And Alex gets 9! I'll do a Weather the Storm, a Chatter Storm, 
a skull winder, a collector oop, a gore claw, uh, fauna shaman. Seven will be a forest. Eight will be an aether flux, and nine will be an overwhelming stampede. The turn is then passed to Cameron, and he starts off by cracking a clue. Then he'll play a swamp his land for turn and crack another. And then he'll pass the turn to Ivern, because he literally can't cast anything into an Elish Norn. And Ivern starts off with a basic swamp. Then he and Cameron will draw two off your temple is under attack. I'll then cast Boros Reckoner and Heliod from Exile. Ledger Shredder will connive off the second cast. Jason discards a land. Then the turn is passed to Alex, and he'll start off with a forest from Exile. Then with the help from Frontier Siege, he'll cast Skullwinder. This will return Teemer Sabretooth to his hand, and then he lets Ivern return Beast Within to his hand. Alex will then move to his second main and cast Teemer Sabretooth and pay the one. Ledger Shredder will connive, and then he'll pass the turn. Jason starts off with Phyrexian Tower as land for turn. Then actual factual Shieldred hits the battlefield. And each of Jason's opponents have to sacrifice a non-token creature, or Planeswalker. Then Lightning Greaves will hit the field. And then Skyclave Apparition. It'll exile Teemer Sabretooth. And then Lightning Greaves are put onto Shieldred. He'll then move to combat and swing exactly 21 at Cameron, and then everything else at Alex. Now it's enough to kill Alex, but he is spiritually broken, so he just eats lethal. So Cameron and Alex are out of the game, and Ivern is drained for two from Nihilor. And yes, the Skyclave Apparition, that does not have haste, did swing the turn it came in. I don't know what to tell you. Anyways, post-combat, Phyrexian Tower will sacrifice the Orc Army to float two black mana, and then he'll cast Arcane Signet. The turn is then passed to Ivern, and he'll start off by cracking a clue. Then he'll cast Beast Within, targeting Elish Norn. She dies, and Jason gets another Beast, and then Ivern cracks another clue. He'll then cast Deafening Clarion to deal three damage to each creature. Ledger Shredder connives. There's five creatures that would die, one of them is Bartolome, so Jason will sacrifice the other four to ensure he survives. Expedited Inheritance will then exile Jason 18 cards, and as you can see, the last card exiled is Moonshaker Cavalry. So let's just move to his turn, where he'll play Command Tower, and then cast it and absolutely obliterate Ivern. Yeah, unfortunately, he doesn't have any responses, so Jason and Nihilor are the winners. Thank you all so much for watching this excellent video. What an exciting game. I do feel a little bad for poor Cameron, though. His goblins got decimated throughout the entire game. Thank you so much, Ivan, for being an excellent patron and player for today's video. I'll never forget winning with your Perforos deck. It was an excellent game. Anyways, I hope everyone else enjoyed this video as well. If you did, leave us a comment down below, and leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. That's enough yapping out of me today. I hope you all have a smooth day.